My name is James Tucker. I'm an independent financial advisor. Uh, my company is JT Wealth Management, and the brokerage that I'm affiliated with is Holborn Assets. So the purpose of me making this video interview with this consumer <clears throat> is for complete transparency. We live in a world where everyone has a freedom of speech and a right to voice their opinion publicly, and I'm utilizing mine. I run a practice that I believe is totally ethical. Uh, I'm highly qualified to UK standards, and I promote that fact. I pride myself on giving sound and genuine financial advice in the interest of a client. I operate a fee-based service, but I give full disclosure to the client exactly how much I am earning personally as remuneration for my services. Uh, what I do is help expats manage their finances offshore, uh, in particular pensions. A lot of expats who have left uh, the United Kingdom may have pensions there. They may have multiple pensions that are separated. We consolidate them into one. And in some cases, we can even transfer them offshore if the person is never going to return to the UK. And that is called a QROPS. Uh, the purpose of doing this is once an expat moves, they uh, suddenly end up completely different tax regimes. And quite often, a lot of expats will meet someone and a partner from another country. Uh, they'll continue then to move to different countries. It, it's almost like a circuit. Once you've made that move offshore, and the odds are you'll stay offshore. And, of course, what needs consolidation is your finances because you're working across multiple countries. Uh, and this is specifically what I help expats with. The Amelia a brokerage, uh, an intermediary that provide licensing and terms of business. The advice I give is solely my opinion as an independent advisor. And each uh, client that I take on, I offer them multiple companies to choose from uh, as a solution to what are their aims and objectives require. And then they make that decision. So if you are looking at selecting a financial advisor, you need to check the level of qualification they have and make sure you actually do check the register. So if you put my name and my membership number into the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investments website, you will see that I'm a paid member and qualified on the uh, directory. There are many advisors out there who are not. They haven't passed the exams and they are not associates or members of the CISI. Now, that's crucial that you have qualified persons giving you advice. So the second most important uh, aspect of a financial advisor is transparency on fees. Ask the question, how do you get paid? The reason is there's two types of advisor. It is fee-based and commission-based. In the United Kingdom and the United States, commission-based advice has now been outlawed, and you have to have a fee-based advice with full disclosure. In other parts of the world, uh, commission-based advice is still allowed. The issue there is with commission-based advice, there's no requirement for the advisor to tell you how much commission. And also, they can get paid commission multiple times for moving you in and out of funds, in and out of products. All the time, they are generating commission for themselves, but the client is paying for it unknowingly. And this can have a huge detrimental effect over the long term. I ask my clients to go online, uh, post about me, but using their full name, uh, who they are, and that's the only true way to judge if a review is accurate or not. I mean, the, the World Wide Web is open to everyone, which on one hand, it's fantastic. We're in the information era. It, it's, for, it's for future. Sadly, again, there's people out there who will utilize this to their personal benefit, you know, and try and steal people's identity, etc., etc., etc. So, yes, a lot of my clients are nervous to go online. And instead, I have a, a personal referral form, which they've posted on a photo of themselves, their LinkedIn profile. 
and they, with permission, allow me to give to serious prospects of mine. So that is far greater in terms of numbers than what is actually you'll find online. So, yeah, it, it is a difficult situation when I ask clients, can you write a positive review for me online? There is a lot of hesitation. They're like, oh, I don't want people to know that I've, you know, I'm a client with, uh, with you because it's a personal money, you know, is a hesitation and they don't want to draw attention to themselves. That said, I, I do have a lot of very good, happy clients, and some of which do go online and post good reviews. They, they are much more comfortable with me only passing it on to known individuals who obviously I verified as a serious prospect, uh, as opposed to posting it for anyone in any country to view. Uh, that's why my referral sheet, as I call it, uh, I'll show only to select prospects that are serious. Uh, reflects the number of clients they've got and the the real sort of uh, feedback they have about me. Uh, I, I'd say probably only a fifth of those that I've got on my refill sheet will allow it to be posted publicly because they just don't want to draw attention to themselves, which is totally understandable. First of all, everyone, it's we live in an era of freedom of speech. Okay. And I am all for freedom of speech. And everyone has an opinion. And everyone should be entitled to voice that opinion publicly. Therefore, what this consumer offers is is a chance for people to actually uh, give accurate feedback on a product or a service they've received. The only criticism I have on it, it allows people to post anonymously, which I believe is subject to abuse for people with malicious intent to slander or, you know, uh, cause defamation to an individual for the purposes of more being a competitor. And having been a victim of this myself, uh, and again, to which I you know, responded and asked some of my clients to respond to, was to challenge the individual, disclose who you are. If this is genuine, who are you? <laughs> you know, uh, don't hide behind a curtain. Uh, if you do have a genuine complaint, Tell us who you are. You know, what are you hiding? Uh, you know, we live in a, a world of Interpol. Uh, you know, no one should feel afraid to post online what they feel negatively about someone. Um, so with that, I always, you know, say if, if someone is genuine and will post who they really are, their real name, a photo of themselves with no sort of smoke and mirrors hiding their identity and it's a negative review, then yes, believe it. Uh, if it's anonymous or with a fake name or very little detail of who they are, then obviously uh, take it with a very big pinch of salt because it's highly likely to be a competitor. So my challenge is to anyone who writes a negative review, disclose who you are and then a complaint can be dealt with if it is genuine. If you won't disclose who you are, it's clear that you're a competitor who is just threatened by my transparency and the ethicalness of what I'm trying to do. That is what I've got to say on anyone posting something negative. If it's true, show us who you are. Tell us who you are. We can deal with a complaint. We will... Uh, mitigate whatever has gone wrong. If you hide behind a curtain of a fake identity, I don't believe it, and neither does any of my clients. Hence why so many have rushed to my uh, support in posting positive reviews about me, and you will find positive reviews from genuine, real working professionals who are clients of mine. Mm -hmm.